everyone. Welcome to Saturday Morning Yoga with me, Jamie. It's great to have you here. I hope we're going to enjoy this yoga adventure. It's a cracker because in today's adventure, we are preparing for a birthday party and we have got one heck of a guest list. It's brilliant. But one of our guests happens to have a fishtail instead of legs. So we need to do some really special magic to help her get some party legs, basically, which means we've got to meet a witch, a rather scary witch. Yeah, <laughs> no big deal. But this is what this adventure is so good for, facing that feeling of fear and learning to overcome it. We can do it. Let's go. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There! Now we're ready to begin. So let's take a look through our cosmonoculars and find out who our story's about today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. <gasps> Ooh, stunning shapes. Look at the spirally colours. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look, can you see it? Can you see the picture? It's a... It's Mimi the mermaid. What's Mimi doing? She's doing yoga. She's doing bowl pose. How exciting, Mimi the mermaid. Now, we're having a birthday party very soon and we've invited Mimi the mermaid to come. But as you can tell, that could be quite tricky as she has a fish tail. She doesn't have any legs, but Mimi has told us about a sea witch who can give her a special potion which will give her magic party legs. Yes, we're going to go and find Mimi and help her get that potion. Oh, and meet that witch. Now, we're not sure about witches. They make us feel a little scared sometimes, a funny feeling called fear. But this is a good chance for us to feel that feeling and see if we can use our yoga powers to make it better. Come on, let's go. We need to get ready for some swimming, so we come into our cat pose. Coming onto all fours, we keep our toes tucked and we arch our back up looking into our belly button. Then we dip our belly down and we wiggle waggle our tails. Now we come into our dog pose, lifting our bottoms up to the sky, stretching ourselves, walking our hands forward a little bit and coming into a very nice doggy pose. Woof, 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 woof. We drop down onto our knees and we tuck ourselves all the way back into a tiny little mouse pose. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Then we sit up and we sit on our bottoms hugging our knees into our chest and we rock and we roll. Ready? Remember, tuck your chin in, squash a tomato under it so you don't bonk your head. Ready? Whoop. Ooh. Very good everyone. We turn to the front, join the soles of our feet together, hold onto our toes and flutter our knees up and down like a butterfly. Very good everyone. Now, we need to pack a bag with some things in it. So we take our legs out long in front of us and bending our knees a little bit to touch our toes. We open up our bag, Ooh, lifting our arms up. We take our arms to the side and we twist all the way one way. Hmm. Now I think we should pack some of our special birthday cupcakes. We grab a load of them and we plop them in. Plop, 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 plop. Oh, lovely birthday cupcakes. We made loads. Take your arms out wide again. Twist the other way. I think we should get some more birthday cupcakes. We can never have too many. Let's get them and plop them in. Plop, 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 plop. Plop, 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 plop. Brilliant. We've got a whole bag full of birthday cupcakes. We lift our arms up to the sky, bend our knees a little bit and close our bag. Ooh. Very good. Now, 
we need to go. So we come up to our knees and we take our arms wide and we give everyone at home a great big hug. Bye! Oh, look, we're going to take a hot air balloon all the way to the beach. Let's blow it up. Bringing your hands around your mouth, give it a big blow. up really high now. Wow! Now, I think we're going to land any minute. Yes, we are. We're going to land at the beach. We need to get into our landing positions. Coming onto your knees, everyone, and tuck yourself up into a landing ball. Ooh. We sit up. We're here at the beach, ready to find Mimi. We need to climb over those big sand dunes, though. So we stand up and we take big steps. Ready? Big step. And another one. Take it back. Here we go. Big step. Very good, everyone. <gasps> On the beach is a whole waddle of penguins. Joining your heels together, your toes out wide, take your wings to the side like a little penguin. We waddle around with the penguins, having a little chat. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you too. Hello. Oh, we can't be chatting all day, can we? We've got to go and find Mimi. Let's look through our sea goggles and see where she is. Thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. Oh, there she is. She's on the rocks out in the water. Quick, grab a surfboard and start to run. Run, run, run into the waves. Run, run, run into the waves. We put our surfboard down onto the water and we lie on it on our bellies. Then we start to swim, paddling out to the waves where we're going to do some surfing. Shall we do it now? OK, come up onto all fours, everyone, and step one foot forward, one foot back, and cartwheel your arms round. We're surfing! <laughs> Jump your feet the other way. Let's do it backwards. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Here's Mimi! on the rocks. Sitting on your bottoms, take your bottom to the side and swish your tail around to one side. Mimi puts a hand on her fishy knee, puts her other hand behind her, looks over her shoulder, looks back at us and she says, ooh la la. Then she swishes her tail around the other way. She puts her hand on her fishy knee again, her other hand behind her, looks over her shoulder, looks back at us and says, Oh la la, I am so glad you are here. I have a list from Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch. We have to find some things for the magic party legs potion. Please, I need your help. We can help. Let's take a look at that list. Huh. Number one, football of crab. Oh, we know that crabs play football, don't we? Let's go and find them. We stand up. And we take our arms up high and we dive into the water. Sploosh. We jump our feet back and come onto our bellies where we swim through the water, following Mimi the mermaid. Oh, we're going through a tunnel. Tuck your toes, hands underneath your shoulders, press yourself up and back, going through the tunnel. Look! There's a little sea snake. Let's be careful of him coming down onto your bellies. We tuck ourselves back as we've reached the rocks where the crabs live. And guess what? The crabs are playing football. We join in. Sitting on your bottoms, bend your knees, feet flat, hands pointing towards your bottom. Lift yourself up and let's dig a digger over here. Ready? Digger, 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 digger. Oh, other way. Digger, 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 digger. Oh, we sit and we have a lot of fun playing with the crabs, but we really need their football. We have an idea. Would it be okay if we have your football and in return, we're gonna give you lots and lots of birthday cupcakes. 
The crabs think this is the best thing ever. And we say namaste to thank them. One, two, three. Namaste. The last thing on the list is coconut of monkey. We know what monkeys are and we know that they love coconuts, but we're going to need to get to the beach and we're going to need to get there fast. Mimi has an idea. Taking your legs in front of you, separate your fin tail. Mimi picks up one of her telefins and she dials the number. <laughs> ah, hello, is that the uh, popcorn, the dolphin? Ah, oui, yes, it's uh, Mimi the mermaid. Uh, would you have, uh, have time to come down here and uh, help me take the cosmic kids to the beach? I have to get coconut of a monkey. Oui. I'll see you in a moment. Ah, oui. Au revoir. Ciao. She puts down the telephone and then realises something. She needs to ring back. So she picks up the other telephone and she dials the number again. <laughs> ah, popcorn? Yeah, I need you to bring uh, more than one dolphin. A pod. A pod of dolphins. Many cosmic kids need to come. Oui. Yeah, we will see you in a moment. Ah, oui, au revoir. Ciao, bye. She puts down the telephone, and before we know it, popcorn, along with a whole pod of dolphins, have come to take us to the beach. Yay! Coming onto your knees, everyone, and crisscross your fingers. Drop down onto your elbows, and let's make our dolphin clicky noises as we dive through the ocean. Ready? <laughs> We get to the beach fast. And when we get there, we stand in a little squat on the back of our dolphin. So we can just poke our head out of the water and see the monkeys on the beach. We give them a wave. Put one hand forward, lift your other hand and wave. And the other way, hand down, lift it up, wave. The monkeys are going to throw us one of their coconuts, so we're going to need to jump up really high to catch it. Ready? Up high on your toes. One, two, three, jump! Yes! We've caught one of the coconuts! We come all the way down and we put it in our special waterproof backpack. We've done it! Now, it's time for us to go to the cave. The cave where Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch is. Ooh, we feel that funny feeling again, that fear. But we're going to be brave. We're going to do some breathing as we swim down. Come to your knees, hands down the middle, breathing in. As we breathe, we feel calmer. And we get closer. to the cave. There it is in front of us. Standing with your feet wide, take your hands above your head. <gasps> Guarding the mouth of the cave is a wobby thong, a carpet shark. Let's come down to our bellies and crisscross our fingers behind our back. Lift up your shark fin. Wobby gong is lolling from side to side. Lolling, 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 lolling. <gasps> We're not sure about Wobby Gong, but we swim towards him. And as we do, we have a rather brilliant idea. We get close to him, we put our hands under our shoulders, we roll our shoulders back, we look at him and we say, Hello, would you like a birthday cupcake? <coughs> Wobby Gong looks rather, rather surprised coming back down. Crisscross your fingers, lift up your shark fin. No, no one's ever offered me something so nice before. I, I, I'd, I'd love, I'd love a birthday cupcake. Yes, yes, please. We tuck our toes, lift our bottoms to the sky, happy that we can make this little wish come true, and we jump our feet into cross-legged. One, two, three, boing. We give the Wobby Gong our special birthday cupcake, and he's delighted. Yes, we did it. Time to tiptoe into the cave. Up we come, everyone. Tiptoe very quietly. Somewhere in here is Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch. There she is, standing in front of us. And we stand as still as mountains. We twinkle our fingers on our heads and our faces. 
noticing the sensations in our body as we feel this funny feeling called fear. We breathe with it, trying to calm ourselves. And as we do, we look at Goody Gomtrops and we see her just as she is, with her craggy fingers standing on one leg. And she doesn't seem to have any teeth. So that must be why she's called Goody Gumdrops. Oh, welcome, Cosmic Kids and Mimi the Mermaid. Have you got those things I needed for the Magic Party Legs potion? Come on, pop them in my oyster shell cauldron. Sure enough, in front of her is an oyster shell cauldron. Sitting on your bottoms, join the soles of your feet together and hold on to your toes. There's already something bubbling away inside it. Bubble, 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 bubble. Come on, first thing we've got to put in there, football of crab. Do you remember the crab's move? Let's do it. Bend your knees, feet flat, hands behind you. Lift yourself up. Let's dig a digger, ooh, that football into that cauldron. Digger, 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 digger. Woo! And the other way. Digger, 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 digger. Woo! Coming back into your cauldron, your oyster shell pose. Joining the soles of your feet together, holding your toes. After we put the football in, it bubbles even more. Bubble, 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 bubble. It's getting all the more bubbly at all the moments pass. Now the last thing that we need to put in, can you remember? Yes, coconut of monkey. Let's roll it in. Tucking yourself up, remember, squash that tomato under your chin so you don't bonk your head as we rock and roll and rock and roll our coconut into the cauldron. Joining the soles of your feet together. Here we go again. Bubble, 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 bubble. Goody Gumdrops the witch spreads her legs wide around the cauldron. She then takes a piece of driftwood and she stirs it. Stir it, stir it, stir it. And then, using another piece of driftwood, she stirs it again. Stir it, stir it, stir it. She puts that down and then crosses her legs, closes her eyes and mutters some magical spells. <laughs> Her eyes pop open. It's ready. <gasps> Mimi's time has come. She comes up high onto her tail, hoping that this is going to work. Now she takes a cup of the potion from Goody Gumdrops and she starts to drink. sudden her fingers start to twinkle oh her body starts to sway a little bit and then all of a sudden one foot steps forward and a whole leg it's halfway worked but what about the other one let's see it's worked two feet two legs magic party legs Mimi gets her balance wobbling around a little bit to try and find her feet. Then she does a big smile. She's so excited she can come to the party now. Yes, she can do it. Now, Goody Gumdrops gives Mimi a package. It's a parcel and inside you'll find some special party clothes and a starfish. Because when you want to come home, Mimi, and you need your fishy tail back, you just make a wish to the starfish. How cool is that? A wish to a starfish. But we'd better go. Nearly time for our party. Luckily, Popcorn the Dolphin's going to take us. Coming down to your knees again. Crisscross your fingers and let's come down onto our elbows. Ready? <laughs> We get all the way back to the beach and head out where all the penguins are still waddling about. Standing up, join the heels together, your toes are out, and waddle around. Waddle, 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 waddle. When they see Mimi, though, coming out of the water, they stop. They've never seen a mermaid with legs before. Mimi 
wiggles into her party clothes. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. She's ready. Now all we need to do is get back into our hot air balloon and get back, crossing her legs. Take your hands around your mouth and blow it up. Ready? We're going up really high. Mimi's looking great. We're really excited about our birthday party now, aren't we? But it might be a good idea for us just to take a few moments, just to rest a while. So we lie ourselves back, letting the hot air balloon take us all the way home. Mimi rests too. And as we lie back, we feel grateful that our friend Mimi has done this for us to come to our birthday party. What a special friend. We also think about all those feelings we felt as we thought about meeting Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch. Sometimes we can feel something called fear. We feel scared and we want to run away. And that's a good thing. It's the right feeling. But other times it's good just to take a moment to breathe and notice what happens when you calm down. Is it still fear or does it go away? This is one of the magic things about breathing, about yoga, is that it helps us feel all calm and clear headed so that when some of these feelings crop up like fear or anger, we can take a moment just to help them calm down by breathing. We breathe now and notice how peaceful we feel. And we're going to take this peace into the rest of our day. So we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We stretch up, making ourselves long like a big piece of spaghetti. And then we hug our knees into our chest, giving ourselves a special moment. We roll over onto our side and we come up to sit, crossing our legs, feeling clear and peaceful. We bring our hands together at our hearts and we say a very calm and happy namaste. Ready after three, one, two, Three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming to the ocean with me and for helping Mimi the mermaid get her magic party legs potion. We're going to have a great time at the party now. I'll see you soon for a Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. That was wonderful. Well done, you. Now we have a special Zen Den, which is called the Owl and the Guard Dog, which helps you understand how your minds work. I hope you find this very, very useful. Everyone. Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. This is where we spend a little time looking at our minds so we can be healthy and happy in our lives. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, bring your hands to your knees and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> Lovely. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's get some sounds going. Ooh, yes. Look at all these lovely sounds. Lots of brilliant ones to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel all lovely and relaxed. Look, a piano tune. Let's have that. Oh, and a soft singing bowl. That's a lovely mix. Now for a smell. Oh, 
wow, look at these. What a fun set of things. Coffee smell. Ooh, wow. French fries. Mmm, that'll make us hungry. Ah, yes. Let's go for the lemon. That gives us a boost of energy and really wakes us up. Today, we're going to talk about the owl and the guard dog. A really interesting way of understanding our brains. But first, I'm going to share a story about something that happened to me when I was 11 years old. At school, I was put into the top set for maths. I was very excited because it meant I would be with my friends. I also felt a bit proud that my teachers thought I was clever enough to be in set one. The hardest thing for me in those maths classes was when Mrs Barfield, my teacher, used to write a problem or an equation up on the board. She would just put it up there and then give us a few minutes to work on it. No explanation or anything. For some reason, whenever she did this, my brain would freeze. I would get into a panic and huff and puff at being made to do it. And I'd even blame Mrs Barfield for being a bad teacher because I found it so difficult. I once even asked to go to the bathroom just so I could get out of there. I got so uptight that I certainly wasn't able to work out the maths problem. Have you ever had this? Where something happens that makes you sort of freeze, so you can't even think straight? Well, don't worry. It's quite normal. And it's because of how your brain works. You see, our brain is really clever. But above all, it's trying to protect us. It's always on guard in case anything happens that might be dangerous so that it can help us stay safe. There's a special part of the brain which sniffs everything out that we're sensing to decide whether it's okay or if it's a serious threat. It's called... The amygdala. Or as I like to call it in your brain, your guard dog. If your guard dog notices something and thinks, hold on a minute, this is scary and dangerous and I don't like it, it'll get your body ready so that you can protect yourself. It gets you ready to fight or it tells you to run away or it makes you freeze. Now, our guard dog doesn't always get it right. It can get carried away, which is what happened in my maths class. The problem Mrs Barfield wrote on the board wasn't really life-threatening, but my guard dog decided it was, so I froze. I wanted to fight. I even wanted to leave. I felt stupid and embarrassed that I was in a class where I couldn't understand. So the guard dog in my brain started barking loudly and running around protecting me. This makes it impossible for the part of my brain which can solve maths problems to get involved. This part is called the prefrontal cortex, right up here at the front. Or as I like to call it, your owl. Owls are wise, you see. They're thoughtful and good at thinking about things. Had I been able to calm my guard dog down, my owl might have had a chance at solving that maths problem. Or if it couldn't solve it, it would have shown me how to ask Mrs Barfield for some help. Instead, my guard dog had taken over and was making me panic, so my poor owl didn't get a look in. Maybe you can think of a time when your guard dog caused you to react in a way that didn't really help you. A time when your clever, wise owl didn't get the chance to help you out. Your guard dog was too busy trying to protect you even though you didn't really need it to. So you were fighting or freezing or running away. So what can you do about that jumpy guard dog? What would a Zen Den master do to get it all under control? Well, here's something you can try the next time you feel your guard dog taking over. First, see if you can just notice him starting to get upset. Do you feel yourself want to run away? Do you feel the urge to start arguing or fighting? Or do you feel like you're frozen to the spot and you don't know what to do? 
These are the warning signs of it taking over. It happens to all of us. Actually, it's trying to keep us safe. The key is what do you do now? The best tool I know is called the Magic 10. With the Magic 10, you count from 10 down to 1, giving your brain some magic time to be calm and process what's going on before you say or do anything. Even if you've started to fight already, rather than carrying on, step back and take a magic 10. Let's see what this does to our guard dog. Count with me now from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There. Can you see how he's less worried now? He's happier. And so our lovely owl can get a chance to help us work out what to do. Of course, your guard dog is very important. He is there to save your life. If there is a real threat, like a fire, or you get lost, or you need to rescue someone, your guard dog will make sure that you make things happen until you're safe again. But sometimes he can just cause a great big fuss over nothing that isn't helpful. It's good to know, isn't it? I wish I had known about my guard dog when I was 11 in my maths class. I might have been able to get some help. And maths would have been much more fun for me. And Mrs Barfield. Hopefully understanding your brain in this way will help you know why you react in certain ways. And with the magic 10, you now have a good way of calming your guard dog and making some space for your wise owl to help you think clearly. Well done for listening and learning about your brain here in the Zen Den. You're on your way to becoming a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den master. Bye-bye! You were great. Well done, you. Now we have some yoga poses in the yoga pose universe for you to learn. It's great to become a master of these poses because when you come to do the adventures, you'll be amazing. I hope you love it. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe. Mermaid pose. Coming to sit on our bottoms, taking our legs out long like a little fishy tail. Now swish your legs round one way like they're a wonderful tail, bringing your hand on your knee, your other hand behind you, twisting to look over your shoulder and looking all the way to the front again to say our little mermaid phrase. Ooh la la! Now let's do it on the other side. Swishing your tail all the way around to the other side now. Your hand on your knee, your other hand behind you, looking over your shoulder, looking all the way back to the front. And all together now. Ooh la la! Now mermaid pose is wonderful for releasing stress and with tummy aches. It's also very good for stretching your whole spine. But the best thing about mermaid pose is we get to practice our French. Ready? Here we go. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jamie. Je voudrais un glace au chocolat, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Au revoir. Mermaid pose. Yoga Pose Universe. Oh. 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 
surfer pose. Standing with your feet wide, front toes point forwards, back toes point to the side. Now bend into your front knee and stretch your arms out nice and wide, like you're whooshing along, riding the waves like an awesome surfer. Now I wonder if we can surf backwards. Let's jump and surf the other way. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Wow, we are awesome surfers. Let's do some more. Now, surfer pose is really good for opening your chest and shoulders and your hips and making you feel supercharged for your day. Whoa, let's do a little bit more. That was exhausting, dude. Surfer pose. Fish pose. Coming down to sit on our bottoms, pointing our toes in front of us. We drop down onto our elbows and then we pop, 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 pop our chest to the sky. Maybe looking all the way up to the sky and maybe back behind us. Now, fish pose is really good for giving our whole fronts of our bodies a big stretch. And it's good if you're feeling nervous to get rid of that closed chest feeling. Now, when I'm in fish pose, I love to blow bubbles. Here we go. Wow, that was pretty cool. I wonder if I can do a shape. Here we go. Oh, wow, can you see what it is? A heart. I'm getting quite good at these bubbles. Let me try again. Here we go. A bubble fish. And here comes a real fish. Oh, look, they've made friends. Oh, that's nice. Fish pose. Well done, that was great. Now we have a lovely Peace Out for you. Peace Out is our guided relaxation series and it really helps your brain and your body totally calm and chill out. It's very, very good for you and I hope you feel wonderful afterwards. Peace Out. Your little star. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. Take a moment now to find yourself a space. Somewhere you can either sit or lie down. Wherever you decide, get yourself comfy. Doing any fidgets or wriggles just so you feel happy to relax and be still. No need to worry if you find being still hard. It's something we all have to practice. And the more we do, the easier it gets. Remember, most things are difficult before they get easy. So be kind to yourself. Give yourself time to practice and improve. Now you're settled. See if you can notice your breathing. Can you feel it? Coming in 
and going out. Coming in and going out. Just watch it. The in and the out. As you breathe calmly, gently, slowly, allow your eyes to softly close. There. Now, with your eyes closed, let your mind make the pictures. Imagine a little star. It's glowing brightly and is surrounded by lots of other stars. From here, you think they all look pretty similar. You move closer to the little star to get a better look. And you see it has a face, two eyes and a smiling mouth. It's looking at you, blinking, waving, dancing. It closes its eyes and you notice that it begins to shine brighter. When it opens its eyes and looks at you again, you feel a sparkly warm feeling inside your tummy and at the ends of your fingers. Ah, oh, that was nice. You look around again at all the other stars and you notice how they are all slightly different. Their faces, their colour, their shape. They are all stars, but each one is different. That's because each one is connected to a different person. The one in front of you is your star. Your star is always with you and will help you in everything you do, if you let it. All you have to do is try. And whenever you feel annoyed or frustrated because something didn't go as well as you wanted, know that your star is in fact growing brighter as it learns how to guide you. Remember, mistakes are a sign that you are trying and trying is what counts. Be kind to yourself. Let your star shine and grow. It will, and it will happen at different times to all the other stars. There is no race and no hurry. You can do anything you want. Believe you can, and you are halfway there. The key is to keep trying. You give your star a hug and feel again that warm sparkle inside your tummy and at the ends of your fingers. You will be together forever. Your star is a partner in everything to protect and guide you. Look after your star, be kind to yourself and keep trying. Slowly you begin to come back to the moment, moving your fingers and toes, taking a deeper breath and enjoying a stretch. Gently and slowly open your eyes and before moving anywhere, take a moment to notice how you feel. Perhaps you can still feel the star sparkling in your tummy and the ends of your fingers. Know that you will always have your very own star and as you try things, as you learn, as you grow, it will grow with you, ever brighter. Be kind to yourself and you will get there. This is Jamie saying peace out.